the air starts to cool, and the leaves on the trees display their fall foliage. The hustle and bustle of the holiday season is upon us. Fragrant trees are cut and decorated with all the trimmings of Christmas. Christmas music can be heard everywhere. There is no doubt, Santa is coming to town. As a little boy who lived on a farm in Iowa, I believed in Santa because he came to my house and I saw him. Little did I know that my jolly old Uncle Mike dressed as Santa so that he could entertain and mesmerize all the children who joined me for a country Christmas. We were not rich farmers. Gifts and toys were simple and few. But all the families brought bounty from their harvests. Oh, what a feast we enjoyed. Sadly, the day came when my mother explained to me that Santa was really Uncle Mike. Oh, how disappointed I was that Santa was not real. He was only a jolly old myth that did not exist. My story must be similar to countless other children around the world. Children stand in line to meet Santa at the mall to share their Christmas wishes. Television advertisers use jolly old Saint Nick to sell their products, and Santa can be seen in nearly all holiday movies throughout the season. The Santa we know today is a true holiday myth. But could this myth have an historic root? Let's see. At what point does a myth become real? How far back in history must we go? We trace the legend of Santa through the mythology of medieval Europe to the country of Turkey in the third century to meet Saint Nicholas. Traditionally, Nicholas was born on March 15th of 270 AD to wealthy Christian Greek parents in the city of Patara in Turkey. His parents died from the plague while Nicholas was young and he was raised by his uncle who was Bishop of Patara. Under his tutelage and mentorship, Nicholas was ordained a priest and he spent his religious vocation giving away the wealth of his family. Nicholas is said to have been imprisoned and tortured during the great persecution initiated by Emperor Diocletian, but was later released under the orders of Emperor Constantine the Great. In 305 AD, Nicholas and several other monks traveled to the desert region east of Bethlehem and established the monastery of Saint Sava. In 317 AD, while in prayer, Nicholas heard the call of the Holy Spirit to return to Turkey and become Bishop of Myra. It's during his ministry in Myra that legend and fact merge. One of the earliest attested stories is Nicholas of Myra saving three innocent men from execution. As these men were about to be executed, Nicholas came out of the crowd, 
pushed the executioner's sword to the ground, released the men from their chains, and angrily rebuked the juror who accepted a bribe. Nicholas heard of a devout wealthy man who lost all his wealth due to fraud and deception. This man was destitute and hungry. He had three virgin daughters who no longer had a dowry, and without a dowry, his daughters had no marriage prospects. In order to survive, the daughters would be forced into prostitution. Hearing of the girl's plight, Nicholas decided to help, but he wanted to remain anonymous. At night, on three different occasions, Nicholas threw a bag of gold through the window of the father. The three bags of gold saved these girls from destruction, and they were allowed to marry. Over the years, the legend of this event evolved to the point that Nicholas dropped the bags of gold down the chimney with one bag landing in socks drying near the fire. This legend became the root of Christmas stockings hung by the chimney with care. Nicholas was legendary for his secret gift giving. He was known to put coins and shoes left out for him, and his acts of kindness gave rise to the traditional model of Santa Claus and gift giving at Christmas time. Another story has survived from history, and that is Nicholas negotiating a grain shipment from Roman grain merchants at great sacrifice to himself. During the great famine of 311 to 312 AD, Myra was slowly dying through starvation. A Roman grain ship was anchored in the port, loaded with wheat for the emperor in Constantinople. Nicholas invited the sailors to unload a portion of the wheat to help feed his city. The sailors were hesitant because their shipment had been accurately weighed. Nicholas promised that they would suffer no loss. The sailors eventually agreed to his request and Myra was saved. When the ship arrived at the capital, they were surprised to discover that the weight of their grain shipment had not changed. The wheat provided by Nicholas fed Myra for two full years and gave them enough for planting the next year. In 325 AD, Nicholas of Myra participated in the First Council of Nicaea and was one of the signatures to the Nicene Creed, also known as the Apostles' Creed. He was an ardent supporter of the doctrine of the Trinity. What can we learn from the life of St. Nicholas? He was a priest who changed his city through the love of Jesus Christ. Is Christmas about Santa Claus? Partially, yes. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater.